Hi, I'm Rose Bianco. I play Rosa Diaz on Cobra Kai. And I am here talking with Chris at Hellblazer Biz. Hey, everyone, I have the honor and the privilege and the company, returning company of Rose Bianca. As you've already heard, she says she plays Rosa Diaz on Cobra Kai, which is now its fourth season. And I obviously I'm really privileged. I know we just chatted about this for um, Rose, but I'm so happy that you're back on my show. I really appreciate it. Thank you. Uh, well, my pleasure. Um, it's it's really an honor to be able to be interviewed and talk about my favorite show, Cobra Kai. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely, I think it's actually the best. Yeah, 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 yeah. The show. She won't leave. <laughs> That's fine. She looked very stubborn, sat there as well, <laughs> just like my dogs do. Uh, yeah, I, I think it's your third time actually, because we spoke one to one, and then you joined the group chat that we had as well. Yes, yes. Do you remember that one? That was that was so much fun, wasn't it? It was like we, we I do remember around. because I met Helen um, mm-hmm. Irving. And she was, uh, and I was working that day. I was so busy that day. It was, it was somewhat rude. I, I remember, yeah. Oh, no, no, it wasn't rude. It was fine. You still you took part. That's more, that's more than what we need. But yeah, Helen was on that one. We invited Helen for there, which was lovely. She's yeah. a huge fan. <laughs> yes, yeah. Excellent. So obviously we are here to talk about Cobra Kai, um, which is, I mean, it's a phenomenal show in a way. We've, we've spoken all about that well before. But, I mean, I think only after three days this time. Was it three or four days, season four, and it was a global number one? I think it was three days. Yeah, I think it was really a really short time, wasn't it? Number one. Yes. It was yeah, absolutely amazing. I'd finished it by Sunday morning. We binge-watched it all on Saturday, me and my wife. <laughs> yes. Which is what you're supposed I to do. I mean, be. I did too. Actually, I, I watched all of it over Saturday and Sunday. Because, as you know, you know, I don't... <laughs> I, I don't get to watch all of the taping that goes on and mm. I don't get to read all the scripts. And so it's all like a revelation to me, you know, anyway. And then just the way that it's executed is so, so great. It is. You get invested in these characters. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you do. Even as a fan, I can imagine obviously when, when you're in the character, you are one of the characters yourself, like um, you do get invested. But yeah, even as a fan with like so. And you've not, you're watching it as a fan as well. You do, you just get so drawn in. Um, and I mean, I was going to talk about that later as well, but with season, I'm, I will say before I start, before I go on, I will, I'm going to put it on the blurb, but there will be spoilers in this chat because I'm not going to be able to hold my mouth. So if anyone's not seen it all, hold back because I will be ruining some of it. <laughs> so, but you know, some of the story arcs again, I mean, I saw someone's tweet, uh, I think it was today or yesterday, and he was right. He said, it's every single character. It's their season, this season. It's just like every, you know, all the characters are built up over three seasons and season four, it's just like, wow. Everything, you know, from Rose Diaz, which is um, Miguel and his mum and Johnny and, and, and Danny's family, every single one has just performed impeccably and superbly as cast and actors in this season. It's just, it's, that's, that's what the tweet was pretty much saying. And I agree. It was and just I think, absolutely I think beautiful to watch. They're embodying their characters more and more. Mm-hmm. You know, everybody, in order to get the roles, had to be good actors to begin with. And then it's a process of embodying the role, really. And it, over a little bit of time, you really do start to go, what would my character do? How would he react to this? Because the directors mm-hmm. give us a lot of leeway to react to what is being told in, in a, a natural way. And most times they they go with it. Sometimes they'll give you a note and say, you know, can you be a little bit more like this or a little bit more like that? We take that note and then you keep going. Mm-hmm. But it's easy to take those notes because we really have a grounding in who the character is. Yeah, definitely, definitely. And, it's, it's, and I think the camaraderie and that, that, as you say, the fact you've been able to build up and, and you really feel in those characters now as well. It's just it just shows through and and. It's, and it's not just the acting either. If it's just say the whole production, ev- everything from the three, the top, the big three's vision again, and the way that the directors coming in and their lighting and their, the camera and the cinematographers, everyone around it, 
and the stage and stunts that go ahead. It's just choreographed so, so beautifully well. It's, it, I just can't sing enough praises, to be honest. I know it sounds sycophantic, but Cobra Kai is like the best show out there, it really is. <laughs> I think it was a, I think it was the Los Angeles Times. Mm-hmm. A critic on the Los Angeles Times, no pushover. And this yeah. critic is a fan, and you can tell. And she's like, I think Johnny, I think, you know, Billy Zappa needs to get an Emmy nomination. His performance mm-hmm. was incredible, incredibly nuanced. He, the jokes were on point every time. They gave him so many jokes this year. Um, I honestly, and I work with with Billy a lot directly. Yeah, yeah, he did. Yeah. He, you know, most of the time, it's at the house, mm-hmm. and and he comes over. Right, so <clears throat> it's just like it's a great guy. His wife and kids came over to the set last year, um, and I got to meet his kid. And they're just. You know, you got to remember these are ordinary people. So, so when yeah. I'm in scenes with them, we're doing them as best as we can. We're not even sure mm-hmm. if we're actually doing what we're supposed to be doing or yeah. are we funny. I don't know. You can't really worry about that, you know. So, watching it later, I'm like, oh, so funny. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I guess because you're in the moment, yeah. I mean, are there many outtakes? I've got that down here as well. Any outtakes and bloopers? There must be because you all have so much fun and you're all such lovely people. I can only imagine the the laughter is literally right underneath your mouth, but it lips when you're trying to speak on half things. <laughs> well, I mean, it's it's um, you know when when there might be bloopers like when you um go bleh, 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 yeah, bleh, it was yeah, you know, something like that, or someone's like thrown or something, yeah, or say Billy, yeah. Billy or uh, what yourself throw a line in that just like cracks everyone up. <laughs> oh, yeah. I think everybody holds their laughter. It's it's really <laughs> um, what's the word? It's fulfilling when it's like action. You do your scene, and then you'll cut, and everybody goes. They're <laughs> 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 really like holding it in the crew. So they're <laughs> laughing. You know that that's good. <laughs> Fantastic. And there was, I mean, there was some brilliant comed- comedic moments. And, like, and Billy did get those line, a lot of the lines in there. And I mean, I, I've loved that character throughout this series because it is, it, for me, it is for obviously many, many other people, it's just that turn of turning Johnny from the bad guy in the beginning to the good guy. Uh, or good, yeah, goodish. Well, no, he's a good guy. He's a good, really kind hearted guy. Him and how much him and Danny have got in common. And you just sit there the whole thing, you know. It, I go, I've got goosebumps just thinking of how they when they were Think working about the together. Growth, the growth of the character, mm. um, of both, of yeah. both characters. Daniel has grown as well, and I, I think that I love how they that one of the um, aims this season was to to have them understand each other's points of view to the mm-hmm. best degree that they could. Yeah, two, exactly. Yeah. Two hard headed men. Yes. See, I use when I when I do training uh, and, and with the cadets that I teach, I use a beach ball philosophy, which is exactly what these two have done in a way. I have a big beat up, just blow you know the beach balls big in, with all the colours, and I'll stand it in front of me and I'll say, right, imagine the beach ball was the size of the room. You can't see me, I can't see them. I say, what colours can you see? And they'll say red, white, and blue, and I'll say, right, I can see green, orange, and purple. Who's right? And I'm like, they're like, well, we are. And I said, and so am I. I said, what you've got to do is just take the ball out of the equation, stand from the other's perspective and realise and sometimes see that the other person can be right in what they're thinking. And that, you know, that, that's how I, my training that I do. That's my, that's my business side. <laughs> but it's exactly no, how Danny and, Johnny, cool. Danny and Johnny worked around that because they, like you say, the defence against the offence. And you can see how, it, how that arc worked and, you know, it's sitting in my mind as we're watching them. Why is she saying, come on, come on, just get a click, you know, get that click in because you can see how it was working and, and moving on. And then finally it clicked where Danny was like, actually, he was telling, you know, he was telling his daughter, he was like, don't, no, use, you know, use the offense as well. Use it your way. Right. And mix it. And, and the and it way was, that, that perfect. it was, the way that Daniel uh, always has this very pure, Point of view and whatever mm-hmm. that meaning is, Miyakito, yeah. very pure, and he just cannot stray from that uh, philosophy. And mm-hmm. and so, just from the outside, it looks like Johnny's um, technique is is a not as 
good. You know, it's not as pure. It's not as, yeah. you know, uh, good hearted or whatever as mm. the Miyakyo way. But it's so great to see you need a little of both. You need a little salt and pepper mm-hmm. all the time. You really do. Exactly. You exactly. Be a doormat. I mean, I know that they're not doormat doormats because they're champions, the Miyagi dos. But mm-hmm. but it's really sometimes so great to have seen that. Hey, sometimes you need to take this other. Uh, yeah. Bump. Evol- evolve. Method. Yes. It's like yeah. people ask me, "What is your acting technique? Is it Meisner? Is it Strasbourg? Mm. Is it Uta Hagen? Is it you know Ivana Chubak and all this stuff?" And I, I just go honestly. I, when I was in college, it was very um, outward type acting mm-hmm. technique. Um, when I went to acting school, it was definitely <clears throat> Stanislavski, and uh, and, I, and I've taken improv classes and I've taken singing lessons. But I still can't sing, but I've taken singing lessons for vocal, just okay. like, uh, strength. And then they say, so what is it? What is your technique? And I'm like, I don't know. It's a little of everything that I've learned over the years. I don't know. You know you, that's how you proceed. That's how you evolve. That's what makes mm-hmm. your maturing process happen. You're taking a little what works for you of everything you've learned. Yeah, exactly. Cause, because, because you are a unique, you are an individual. And how you do it doesn't have to be exactly how someone else. You know, it, you know that's the, it's a philosophy you should have in life because... If you stick to what one thing only and you don't learn and you don't adapt to change. And that's the big thing you know, in life, let's say with your acting, especially with those different techniques, because there are so many, you can adapt to the changing environments of technology, for example, of how it's been brought in, you know, and how you adapt your technique of acting to that. With current, with Cobra Kai, obviously both Johnny and Danny have got to adapt to that change and realize that to beat Cobra Kai, <laughs> they will have to adapt their styles in order to do that. Uh, right, and right. yeah, and, and it's, it's it's fantastic. The montages of both of those two learning each other's styles as well. I was, I was crying. We laughed, we laughed at and just it was just I, especially I, John. He's it, just like what? sitting there. He came back and he's like, "You've like, done it." There you go. You missed a bit. <laughs> it's just oh, it was pure brilliance. It really was. <laughs> it was well. I like I like all kinds of things. Like when he pushed when he was being a bully to the pansies and the pansies, you know. <laughs> It's like you're a pansy, and it's just so silly. It's just silly, you know. Yeah. Obviously, it is. I was speaking to a friend of mine, uh, a good friend, and he's just started watching it from season one and watched a few episodes. And he was just like, "It's so bad. It's good." I said, "But it's not bad." I said, "It's not bad." I said, "It's the comedy. That's how it's meant to be. Kitsch. It's comedy. It's it's bringing right. it back into that. That's what it's." So it's working. He's obviously just using the wrong terminology because he loves it to bits and he can't wait to watch more of it. But it's his terminology, I said, no, that's it's not that that's not the right words. I said it's designed for you to laugh. It's designed to to, to have that nostalgia for the people who remember that, and obviously for new people, it's it's a whole brand new thing for them um, a lot of the time. It works yeah. for them too. People it who does, weren't yeah. around in the eighties are enjoying it. I found out yeah. that my daughter's friend, who is a middle school teacher. Mm-hmm. I guess told them, oh, I know somebody in that show. Oh my gosh. So they're all excited. They're like, oh my God, you know a celebrity. <laughs> Middle school children. You know, it's just it just is across the board because the 80s kitsch is a real thing. And it's so it great. And the music. Woof. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Phenomenal. I've got to say, I actually walked out of my house. It was last year. I had Hannah Kettle on. Um, you know, Moon. I yeah, love she came her art oh, this she's, year. Oh, she's so yeah. lovely. I think she's from North Carolina or something. Uh, she might be in LA now, but uh, if I run into her, I'll just like, Hannah, I loved your your, your performances. She, she is. It was brilliant. Um, but I had, she was on my show, and I actually had one of my neighbors who I very rarely speak to. I've got a small girl. And she stopped me in the street with her friend, and they're very shy when I came at my house to put the rubbish out or the garbage, right? And then um, they said, excuse me. They said, excuse me. Thought, yeah. Did you do that show? You talked to Hannah Kerr, you know, to Moon from Cobra Kai. And I was like, oh, uh, the interview, the hell plays a bit. That's the one. Like, yeah, that's me. Like, oh. <laughs> and I was like, they said they love her. And they love, you know, love the show and love Cobra Kai. They just didn't realize it was me. Then all of a sudden, 
I've got that little fame of I went back in the house with a huge head. Someone's recognized me. <laughs> I love <laughs> that. I love but, that. But like that's say, really great, well, that's a great story. I was going to say there are characters in this show that are role models and inspirations for a mm-hmm. panoply of things, of people, all types of people. Just yeah. look up to uh, Samantha and Peyton is so vulnerable. Mm. Uh, her character Tori had an incredible year. Also, I'm mean, honestly that girl is is uh, I believe she is headed towards superstardom. She's so good. So yeah. I just love that arc that she had. Um, and uh, for whatever reason, Carmen and I and Miguel represent a lot for Latinos who mm-hmm. just are just loving being represented in such a good non-stereotypical light yeah. um I, I know a lot of people just love my character because i'm bringing something that is not super common there are some tropes that are similar grandma types on some shows mm-hmm. like, uh, jane the virgin and um and i can't remember them although one day at a time things like that but my my grandma's a little bit different and so yeah. I, i'm just kind of doing my thing and how I view this character and what her perspective is, what her motivations are. And so they're all unique and mm-hmm. I'm very happy that some people find value in it. So. Definitely. I mean, Rose is very funny. Uh, the lines that she comes out with, it's just, <laughs> and obviously that, the way you deliver them, it's just when you're, you know, you're reading coming out in Spanish and it's all of a sudden you hear it and you're just looking, it dawns on you, ah, Creasing up with laughter at some of the quips <laughs> she comes back with, you know, it's the opposite innuendos and everything. Oh, it's just, she's just brilliant. She is very, like you say, very different um, type of granny to be playing. <laughs> Thank you very much. Very, very, very wise and, uh, yeah, very wise and, yeah, sarcastic. And bottom line, very supportive. I think I convey that, that I'm just, I'm here for these, my family. I'm here for yeah. them in any way. Exactly, definitely. Uh, and then the love, especially the bedside with, with um, Miguel as well when he was back in there. Oh, that was mm. heartbreaking that moment. It was just that noise, sickening noise on the mat. Was like, we were like, oh, well, I was like, oh, his back's gone again, his back's broken again. <laughs> I know, really I know. Upset. Yeah, but it's good, crazy. And, and I say, it's just, like I say, going back to this, it's not the that we've also seen other characters returning as well. Um, and, and, and I, I know I'm focusing on the characters. Sorry, right? <laughs> but another one we know about is Chris as well, because he's someone who I've hated since 1985, since I first oh, watched Karate. No, and he got redeemed <laughs> this year. He did. Yes, <laughs> that's a sp- I've already said there'll be spoilers, but yeah, that's the um. You can see uh, his arc has been fantastic. I mean, you know, Martin is a brilliant actor, anyway, right? and you see that as well through three, and then with Silver coming back as well, and this art going, and you see that PTSD, you, can, you really start. I mean, I know a lot of Vietnam veterans through what I used to do, and I know what some of them go through, and you're seeing that in Martin's increase, and you're like, now I can see why his life, he wants, he's trying to be so hard, and he has to, he has to be, because that's how he survives. It's right. the only way he knows how to survive in life. Um, and he wants that for other people. He doesn't want to see other people have to fail. And you, and you start thinking, Oh my God, I, I actually feel for him, especially to, especially at the end, you know, <laughs> that ending. You're like, well, I mean, especially like, because I, I was glad that he was able to have a moment of reconsidering his own yes. actions. Yes. That. So, which is unusual. I had a, a, a therapy session once and I mentioned my mom, who I adore and love beyond belief, mm-hmm. but I said something about my mom was very stoic and uh, she said, I don't have time for a nervous breakdown. You know, I don't have any money for, a she used to say that all the time. We'd, we'd always like, we always say like, mom, Hey, I don't have time for a nervous breakdown. So he, he said something like that stoicism, that survival, that survival mode. And mm-hmm. that's how you have to explore that and blah, 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 you know. But the thing about Chris, potentially Silver, although I think Silver is a little more psychotic for real. Yeah. <laughs> but he, he probably 
is in survival mode all his life from probably mm-hmm. the PTSD and yeah. never having explored it or examined it or, or mm-hmm. discussed it with anybody really because that's soft. Yeah. Um, and you know, I understand. I, I, I have, I've had a little bit of, of counseling sessions over my life. I don't believe in it a lot, but sometimes I'm told it's the thing to do. So I've gone and it's been helpful. So Yeah. Yeah. Um, you're right. There is, especially yeah. for someone of that character, like you say, that of portraying, I say that age and male figure in that age as well, because like you say, they don't always yes. want to talk. And that's a big thing at the moment. That generation that was definitely not, they were like, yeah. Yeah, keep it, keep it quiet, keep it quiet, and don't speak about it. And you can see that um, coming through. And uh, you're with Silver, uh, yeah, There's, he's just Silver. I he's, Silver. He, I think he is a, a genuine. So <laughs> the looks that he could give on that show, when some of the looks he was giving, and you're right, yeah, exactly. There's no other way to put it. Yeah. <laughs> oh man. <laughs> and, that, so and, and, and even even the actual in the champion in the actual championship as well you saw the way you say you know where you had certain redemptions going on but you saw Silver's face and there were things that he decisions he was making and yeah. you could see Crease in the background and I was thinking he's not going to like this you know like again I said to spoilers but you know opening multiple versions and stuff you can see Crease in the background I have not been consulted <laughs> and that's how it looks like you know and it's like right so I think Silver is very very clever in the character. I think that's where he's, he's got he's highly intelligent with his and a highly intelligent yes, sociopath. And, and, and that's, he's, yes, he's kind of like uh, Dexter or, or, or Ted Bundy in that he's got a mm. very veneer, a very civilized veneer. I wrote this on Twitter. He's Hannibal got Lecter. the veneer. Yeah. Uh, yes, kind of a <laughs> He has a great veneer of civility, urbaneness, mm-hmm. intelligence. You know, he, he can play the game. He could probably... If he cut his hair and chose to, he could probably go into New York and be a stockbroker, you know, this this sort of thing. But um, because he's so extra intelligent, that makes him more dangerous, I think. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Because he's going to find everything he can, uh, which is why the end, very end one was like, sit in shock horror, my jaw dropped to the ground at the very last scene at the graveyard as well. I was like, yes, because if anyone can do it, I was like, I'm not going to say that bit. I was just like, Wow. <laughs> I was, I was, I'm, I'm, this spoilers everywhere. I was I'm sold. I'm gonna. This is gonna have like asterisks everywhere, saying spoilers throughout. <laughs> I think we've been pretty good trying. We to have been, yeah. Trying to avoid a little bit. The yeah, and contain them. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, it was. It was very good um, altogether. I mean, since we've last spoke as well, there's other things that you've been part of too. I mean, you're not just part of the Cobra Kai world. You're now part of Marvel as well. I mean, you did have roles in One Division. <laughs> Small yes. part, yeah. A couple of Mrs. Jones, was it? Was it Mrs. Jones? Oh, good heavens! I think I can't remember, but you're in one of the yeah, somewhere. <laughs> because that makes, that makes you part of Marvel now, though. <laughs> yes, it does because it wasn't a throwaway role. It was a very small role, but it was a very funny role, so mm-hmm. it stood out. So I mean, and honestly, when that came out, um. That was a big hoopla among everybody. I, everybody watches Marvel, apparently. So mm-hmm. that also, I just got emails and texts, and Instagram messages like, Rose, I know you to be so cool. So that was definitely fun and worthwhile doing. I don't care too much about being part of the Marvel Universe. But I don't. My role is much too small to be significantly part of the Marvel Universe. Mm. I don't think they're bringing it back. So... Um, <laughs> But that's okay. I was also on Doom Patrol. And I had a yep. good role in Doom Patrol, which also has kind of a cult following and, you know, like the convention type following. Mm-hmm. Um, and that was, the, I loved being on WandaVision. I got to see the set. It's like a Dick Van Dyke what? set for real. They had, what was it? <laughs> I've, not, I've not actually, I'm WandaVision is one I've not actually seen yet, which is quite shocking. I've not got around to it. It's shocking. Um, <laughs> it was actually, crazy. It's good, but I will say this because I was not that big of a Marvel fan, although I do like Captain America and Iron mm-hmm. Man and uh, uh, Civil War, Captain America Civil War, the one about the big guy who did like that. Yeah. So <laughs> obviously, I'm not hugely into it. <laughs> I, like, so. <laughs> yeah. I, like, um, I like Sebastian Stan, and, mm. and he was like the bad guy in one of those movies. And then he. Yeah. 
So, so I do get it. So what was I saying? Oh, um, so I watched the first episode, the black and white episode of WandaVision. And mm-hmm. I literally was like, good heavens, Marvel must have good fans to watch this and keep watching. <laughs> <laughs> but then by the second episode, it just like really picked up. You know, right. it was just all laying the groundwork in the first episode. And then it just went like that from there. It was very yeah. fun to be there by the time I got yeah. there. The Brilliant. Third. See, that's why I've got to watch it because we watched the first one and my wife can be very picky about what she sees and when she watched that she couldn't get into it so I've had to turn it off and obviously other things have come on since then so I've got to get back to it again so we can carry on with it um, and what, carry on watching <laughs> yeah do tell her that it, it just definitely gets um, more interesting and and it was very hugely successful and then oh, it the- was I love those characters as well and the actors there too mm-hmm. well I, I love um, what's her name oh my gosh she played like the bad guy who sang a song at the end. Um, it was Agatha all along. She played Agatha. Oh. Anyway, she's a very famous actress. But <laughs> she, she was wonderful, wonderful. Mm-hmm. And of course, uh, Elizabeth Olsen. I adore Elizabeth Olsen. That's why I just kept giving it a chance. I'm like, oh, I love her so much. Yeah, she's brilliant. <laughs> um, then there was the other one with Hawkeye. Well, there a one in between with with Anthony. Um, oh gosh, I'm showing my ignorance. <laughs> one, the one with the new Captain America and Sebastian Stan. Because I Anthony Anthony Mackie, yeah, yeah, Anthony Mackie. And then I saw the other one, Hawkeye, who I have friends who play LARPers in there, and we're all jumping up and down like, oh my God. <laughs> that was so amazing. Yeah, so, Hawkeye was brilliant. Rathos, he was a great LARPer. And mm-hmm. uh, Robert Brent, Walker Brancho was a great LARPer. At a Tempo was a great LARPer. They're all Atlanta actors. They're very excited about being in that. Okay, oh, we will move on. So, yeah, <laughs> uh, in Zoom Patrol, uh, Diane Guerrero was amazing. I want to be mm-hmm. her mother. Some other show, and she's like, I get, I get into these things where I want to play Rosario Dawson's mother. <laughs> No, it was Diane <laughs> mother. She was so great. That was very impressive. Cool. The Tomorrow War as well, because I did see that one. That was, another, that was another film. Oh, right. I did work on that for a couple of months and was one of the soldiers. But um, I did have a speaking scene, but they cut it because that happens. Uh, yeah, it does. Yeah, you can do all your work and they'll get rid of it. <laughs> so we put editing in the editing room, isn't it? I know. Well, there's so much. There's so much. They did like half the scene. It was like a scene where people were talking about where they came from, what their purpose was in being here. And all mm. that. There were like maybe four or five people talking, starting with Chris Pratt and then Sam Richardson and then me and then this uh, uh, Mary Lynn and I think somebody else. But they decided, oh, that scene is way too long. So they just cut it to just Chris Pratt and Sam Richardson. And then like, oh. <laughs> that's great. Moving on. <laughs> Alas, what can I say? But I did enjoy yeah. it. I love filming anything. <laughs> That's the great thing is that it doesn't matter. Even though you've done it, you still you've, you've got the work work going there, and you still have that you know the experience and, and learning each time, and of, you know the different types of things to go. Mm-hmm. Oh, I can't speak now. I've lost my words, right? <laughs> you know what I mean. But you, you get the experiences of all of the different sets and the different actors to work with, and and, and it's just work. And you know, as for, for someone where it's your passion, it's it's uh, it's not a, it's not a job. It's a what's the word? A, voca- a vocation. Yeah, where it's that's what you were called yeah. to do. Then it, I, I guess you know as long when you're working in there, it's that fun and that atmosphere that you, you thrive as well. Obviously, yeah, being on yeah. screen type of work at the end of it is great rather than being on the editing floor. But you know what I mean. <laughs> well, yeah. I mean, it's all important because excuse me, oh, my legs are falling asleep. Um, <laughs> how's that? Okay. That's okay. <laughs> um, of course, if they had kept the scene in, it might have been better because then I'd have something else for my reel. Because mm-hmm. you have to have a reel, and I have segments of Cobra Kai and you know various shows that I've been in on my reel. And casting directors look at that, and of course, that's all you have to. I was sad that I didn't have something really good for my reel, um, yeah. but just having that experience and having that on my resume 
and having met the producers and having met mm-hmm. Chris Pratt and a lot of other wonderful actors on that show. Um, the experience is good, not just in terms of experience of having fun, of learning new things, of pushing myself to the limit, because that was very hard for a little old me <laughs> to be running with a rifle, you know, all this running <laughs> that I had to do. And heavens, Betsy, that, that was a strain. <laughs> um, and, and so that was very good, uh, a good working experience to do that. And I learned a little bit about gun safety. And believe me, Mm -hmm. the gun safety is a huge thing. And, you know, I'm I'm about to talk about that gun accident that a few months ago. That just is so unheard of that that would have happened. I feel so sorry for him. I really do. (laughs) I do too. It's just insane. But so I did learn a lot. Um, I got to meet Chris Pratt and, and be with him on the set all the time. He's very funny. He's very kind. Like we had scenes with hundreds of extras Mm -hmm. for hours. And he would just like make jokes at the top of his lungs. He'd be making jokes, dirty jokes. And the the extras, entertaining the extras. I kid you not. You know, just a really nice guy. Yeah. Uh, Very nice guy. Watch the Seahawks game. It was like a Seahawks football game, and in between takes, he'd like run and go, oh my God. And then all the men were like, oh, ah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it was all very, very interesting. Um, cool. Excellent. Yeah. Uh, I do like to act all different kinds of roles. Uh, mm-hmm. Like Helen mentioned in Twitter, and she said, I was about to mention that one as well. She said, obviously, you know, from Yaya to a nun to a gunslinger or mafia boss. Uh, and that's what you know. I mean, I saw the question, and then I saw your answer. I was like, "No, <laughs> you've answered it. I can't ask you." <laughs> oh, oh <laughs> you okay. Did. No, no, I'm, I, was, I was kidding. I was joking. That's a, yeah. So obviously, you know, she does ask that. Obviously, the different roles that you've had, and have you tried to study for the roles of pure improvisation? And obviously, that's she's thanking you again for being a real great role model. So uh, you did briefly go into it on Twitter as well, where you go into where you study for each role and, and learn and sort of find the background. Yes. Yes. Each audition. Auditions are, actors are told this, and a lot of actors, especially at the beginning of their careers, um, and even at the end of their careers, auditions can be horrible. But I, I'm not proving myself with these auditions because I'm not super famous. And so now all of a sudden I'm not having to, you know, they're like, they deign to ask me to audition for this. You know, it's like I'm not there. I audition for all my roles. And yeah. I do have fun with them. And I do have, I have to learn different accents. Um, mm-hmm. I have to do like an Austin, Texas accent last week. And for, for a Mexican lady who was a Mexican American from mm-hmm. Austin, Texas. <laughs> okay. and, you know, and that was uh, something that I had to really work hard on because accents don't come that easily to me. Mm-hmm. Speaking Spanish is easier, and speaking Spanish with various different Spanish accents, it is a challenge. But um, they're easier than than speaking in English and having to do all these different accents. Yeah. So, so I just love exploring it and learning it, and figuring it out, and and figuring out this character's motivations, what's going on in the scene, and all those things. There, it's like acting class over and over and over. So I do mm-hmm. enjoy. Fantastic. It's lovely to hear that. I, I mean, I love language. I love accents and dialects. I mean, I, I lived in Germany, studied German. And I remember because we all came back from university, we all went to different parts of Germany to live for a year. And we went there, obviously not really loud enough, I think in accents and dialects, but there was 13 of us and we all came back. And they, we sat in the tape, we sat in the class, you know, in, the, in the lecture room, and we all had to talk to each other in German. And none of us could understand each other. Because we basically picked oh. up all the, all the, you know, it's really, really fast. I mean, I'm just, I'll just quickly say, I mean, German for, I don't know, is Weissnicht. That's the, that's the standard German. But where I lived, it was Weissnicht. And it's, you know, and that, that's what I picked up. Okay, so, the regional dialects. Oh, Really different. <laughs> all right, I need to stop this. I'm going to decline that. I apologize. That's all right. No. <laughs> so yeah, the regional dialects have completely turned things around. It was kind of 
in German, that, that was kind of like Yoda speak, the way I was speaking. <laughs> it's like how Yoda would speak. They'd throw the verbs and stuff around. And, uh, and other people were doing that from different areas as well from where they'd been. Um, so you have to, you know, I love being to learn those accents and dialects and, and try and pick them up myself. So it must be hard. It's, there's no way I can, cop- I can mimic them. So as an actor, um, going into those roles, like you say, and being able to have the skill to be able to learn and pick up those accents. Well, I mean, some great. people are more skilled than others. For, uh, okay, let's say just something that you can probably relate to and many of your, you know, viewers. Um, I'm from the United States. You are from, I guess, England, right? Yeah. Okay. I can understand most English shows because I watch a lot. I have Brit Box. Mm-hmm. I like a lot of British shows. But I will say that like movie, like New Zealand movies or mm-hmm. Scottish movies, <laughs> like I have to read the subtitles for a while until I can understand what they're saying. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. I, I ever do that. Yeah, there's, um, I could say from some, I live in Wales, so it's the same for some of the Welsh as well. Cause I've, I mean, I'm English, but I've lived in Wales most of my life. But Scotland, I can say the same for Scotland as well, because there are some extremities where they speak very, from, especially in Glasgow. And um, mm-hmm. that's a very, very, you know, the lovely people. I'm not, them, you know, they're great people, but the sure. dialect is so, so strong. And even I have difficulty, uh, you know, we have difficulty, not just me over here doing that same thing. And sometimes we'll have to look at some titles that's too. Funny. <laughs> Robert Carlyle, especially when he's when he's got very when he does his full strength. Yeah. Oh, by the speak. way, one of my favorite movies mm-hmm. um is um 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 it's that drug movie with uh you train spotting. Train spotting is one of my favorite movies. I my words also disappear in the middle of sentences all the time. <laughs> but I love train spotting and they're all Scottish, I guess, because they're all yeah. <laughs> you know. <laughs> And, and now, though, I've seen that movie probably four or five times and I know everything that's happening and I understand everything that they're saying, you know, just from hearing it. Yeah, but yeah, they're very, very broad Scottish in that movie. <laughs> <laughs> but it's great. I mean, um, and as, I mean, I'm looking at the times, so I have to draw it to close. I mean, you, you've got a busy day as well. So is there anything, before I stop the recording, Rose, because it's been amazing talking to you again, is there anything you'd like to say to people who are watching or listening to this now? Oh, Lordy. Um, thank you for watching. Thank you for watching Cobra Kai and being Cobra Kai fans. It's really, it's really appreciated by the cast. And for me, it's done wonders for my career. Um, and, and the, and the more well known cast has been, they're just really appreciated. It's just, it feels good. And the, and the creators are, um, over the moon that they have this concept and they had to push to get this concept made. And, and they, they, they're so, they're so creative. Those guys they are so their shows are so creative. So if it wasn't for fans watching the show and loving it, um, of course they wouldn't be as successful as they are, but they are as successful as they are because they can bring some quality awesome stuff for the fans to watch so there's that's that and also it was a pleasure to speak to you chris you're such a delightful person thank you so much for asking me to do this